I'm having a really weird evening tonight because I've just got done recording about two hours of Timberborn, which will be hitting the channel all throughout this week. And then I went and looked at the comments on the previous episode of Airport CEO, and it's just so much support and kindness and people being like, man, don't, don't worry about it. Don't push it. Don't stress yourself. If you're still sick, then don't, you know, just, just get better. And I just... I don't know, I got a little, I got a little emotional, I'm not gonna lie, I, if, if you've been with the channel for a while, you know I have a love-hate relationship with YouTube comments, so many of them are amazing, and then you get the guy that comments in a, literally, some of the comments in the video where I said that I was probably gonna get COVID were like, yeah bro, but where's the next episode of City Skylines? And then most of them were like, dude, just take it easy, and I'm just, I, I feel really grateful is what I'm getting at. And I know this is a weird place to throw it in there. And I know if you're just watching this video because it got recommended to you, you're probably thinking, what is this guy doing? <laughs> I don't care. I just want airport CEO. I just feel really grateful. You know, this job and your support is what let me sort of look after my grandparents while we were all dealing with COVID-19. So yeah, I, I feel really grateful. And uh, the reason I even went to the comments was because I wanted to see suggestions for the baggage issue that we've been having where bags are getting loaded onto planes that otherwise shouldn't. And there were plenty of suggestions on how to deal with that. And that's what we're going to do today, which is why I've built a new area up above baggage handling, because I want to make it better. So we're going to start plain and simple with a normal uh, baggage scanner, which I'm thinking, I mean... Obviously, the bags kind of need to come up one way or other. Uh, I'm thinking we'll sort of start down here. And we'll just go with a normal bag scanner right about there. Right? So, nothing too fancy, nothing too crazy. That works out for me. Now, the bags come in. If they go through this, I think the whole idea is essentially that we need what is basically two-factor authentication. And that was, that was most of the comments as well. Most of the comments were along the lines of, okay... Your issue is most likely things hitting this guy and just getting approved because this isn't an amazing scanner. So we're going to have the tier one scanner feed into a tier three scanner, which will then feed out. And I should probably, I should do this in planning mode, actually, so that it doesn't, uh, so the stuff doesn't get built while I'm doing this because we need to do this carefully. So let's get uh, good old planning mode right there. And let's just see what we can do. So. Tier 1 scanner feeds into a Tier 3 scanner with a normal little bit of conveyor belt going between them. And if everything's okay, the bags will just continue off on their merry way. And that's great. If anything should fail, the Tier 1 scanner, I feel like it goes out this way. I mean, it obviously goes out this way. But I think, I think what we do is we have this all sort of loop around a little bit. So if it fails tier one, it's, or it fails this guy, it then feeds into uh, these guys, right? So it then feeds into the tier two scanners. So we find out what exactly is, is in the bag. And should the bag happen to fail any of those, I think that's where it feeds out into a baggage destroyer, which honestly, it could probably be sort of back this way a little bit so the bags kind of get sent backwards to be destroyed and that's okay but i wonder if the thing to do here as well would be to do another one of these manual scanners and then just do something plain and simple like this so what we end up with is tier one if it fails it hits tier two and has to pass tier three to get approved and if it passes, it still has to pass a manual check or it still gets thrown back to hit the tier twos. I feel like that would probably solve a lot of the issues. I'm not certain that it will solve a lot of the issues, but I feel, I feel like it probably would. So I feel like this is kind of what we're going to have to do here. So we'll see if it works out, basically. That's, that's kind of where we're at. Uh, the bags all come up from over here. That's pretty much going to stay the same, although I would, 
I, I would be slightly inclined to maybe change it up a little bit so that we have something a bit more interesting looking. So right about here, we're going to want a, an escalator up. So right on that spot right there. So that'll feed the bags into the whole system. And then over, over this way, we want an escalator down, which feeds them out right about there. And we can... Uh, we can probably feed them underground from there as well. So straight down there. And then that loops out onto this whole system. Yeah, that's actually okay. So basically from there, we just loop this around over this way. And that will connect up to the existing system. So that should be totally fine. All we need to do is take this section of uh this section of conveyor belt and basically connect it to this guy so what i think i'll do for this just to make it a little bit interesting is go one two three four five six uh one two three four five six uh hold on let's try that again one two three four five six so it'll be there and then that needs to be an escalator I guess up as well so escalator up in this spot should connect there and that just gives us a little bit of exposed conveyor belt just because it looks a little bit interesting and then all we need to do is take this guy and connect it to there so that should be fine that should be totally totally fine so let's grab some high-speed conveyor belt uh, bring this guy in we should probably go for just high-speed everything to be completely honest so that should be high speed then this whole section should probably be high speed as well just to get it all moving so it doesn't end up you know backing up or anything silly uh, and then this guy as well is going to be a high speed escalator going up into all of this now it can definitely slow down here this bit has to be slower so that's that's okay and then this bit's fine that bit should probably be that can be slow as well that's okay so that's basically all the changes that we need to do. That is essentially everything. So we'll go ahead, we'll say build this, we're going to say build this, and we're going to say build all of this and all of this as well. So everything's going to get built, and then this will end up getting demolished, and we'll put a little staircase in and some elevators. In fact, you know what? Let's just take a chance, and let's go ahead and just demolish everything down here right away. Because we're going to need the escalators and all that stuff as soon as possible. So all of this is getting replaced. We're going to have access up here. This will hopefully deal with the issues. Basically, everything has to pass a two-tier system to get through and be put on a plane. We shouldn't. We shouldn't. And that's, that's the key word is shouldn't. We shouldn't have any issues. Although I... I... <laughs> We're going to find out, basically. Now, let's get some stairs. And let's... So, item position not valid is fine. So, let's just put them... Let's see. Something like this. I guess I guess something like that's probably fine for the stairs. Different zones may not be usable for passengers. Does it cross different zones? Uh, yeah, it does actually. That's 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 fine. Uh, we'll just do that so it's in one zone, and that's all right. So now, I mean, all of this is slowly getting built. All of this is going to back up for a little bit, and that's okay. We should see all of this come together pretty quickly, as well as oh, that's the conveyors getting done down there. That's fine. So those guys are going that way now. They're backing up here, which is okay. And what are these, what are these guys actually doing? Is that the stairs finally going in? It is. Now we have all of this going in, which is great. I hope this works. I really hope this actually solves the problems and doesn't somehow make it worse. Because the way I'm looking at it is, let, let's, let's rotate. I don't like rotating in this game, but I'm going to rotate. So let's just run through it before it's finished. Bags come into a tier one scanner. If they are approved, they go to a tier 3 manual scanner. And if they're approved again, they go onto the plane. If they fail either of these steps, they go to the specific scanners. We're going to be looking for 
uh, you know, uh, by bio, uh, bio stuff, so food. If it fails, destroyed. If it uh, fails the gun check, destroyed. Explosives, destroyed. Drugs, destroyed. Uh, whatever, destroyed, etc., etc. If it passes all of those, it still has to pass a manual check. If it passes all of them, it goes in the plane, fails any of them, it's destroyed. And that's a lot of stuff getting destroyed. Oh my god. Um, I'm a little concerned at the amount of baggage that we seem to be destroying. I'm, I'm a little, I'm a little wary of the fact that we might be destroyed. <laughs> have, I, have I set this up wrong? Hold on. Have I, have I set this up wrong? There's no way I have, right? Yeah, so if it's good, it goes straight through. Right. Right? Yeah. That's a lot of stuff getting destroyed, though. That's worrying. I mean, there is some stuff getting through, but that's that's that is still worrying. That's still a lot of stuff going for the uh, the old the old cargo annihilator. <laughs> that's that's that is okay. You know what? We're not going to worry too much about it. Let's just paint the cargo annihilator a bright red so it kind of stands out a little bit. So go for that. Uh, we'll get these guys in a, a, a bit of a better shade of blue. We'll get this guy in a shade of green. And you know what? These guys as well. In fact, you know what? Everything in here should be like a nice red. Right? Everything. So it's like, yeah, we're, we're checking everything. It could be dangerous. That's why everything's red. But that should now be working, right? So that's all still getting fed into the same system. And then it all just funnels out to where it needs to go. So that's that's fine. Uh, I do want to bulldoze this, though. And honestly, it's very tempting to just put in some some high-speed conveyors at this point. I'll tell you what. Let's let's actually do that. Let's, let's replace all of these with high-speed conveyor belts. So that if it's approved, it's gone. And it's gone quick. In fact, even here could be high-speed conveyor belts. So if it's if it's denied, it's gone quick. It's gone straight into the cargo destroyer. And that'll be a beautiful little thing. I don't imagine it'll take too long to tear all this apart. No, it absolutely will not. So that's fine. That's good. The ones underground are going as well, which is all right by me. And all of these have gone too. Okay, so now you come over here. And I need to remember exactly where these line up, because that's going to be a bit of a bit of a pickle. In fact, get rid of those two. And let's see what we're looking at. So we're looking at escalators down. And they are right here and right here. And that's absolutely perfect. So now we just grab a high speed conveyor belt here and right here. And that'll be everything set up again. Once these guys are gone, we just run a simple high speed conveyor the entire way down that way and that's that's perfect that's exactly what we're looking for just speeds things up that tiny little bit we don't have to do this there's not a lot of benefit to doing this it doesn't speed it up that much but just a little bit just, see, just a teeny little bit teeny tiny little bit just makes it a little bit more efficient i guess uh, and we'll run it this way as well again just to be a little bit different and there we go that that looks okay. That's that's totally fine. I'm hoping that this fixes things. I really do. I'm hoping that solves all of our problems. And that we don't have to worry about anything anymore. I'm also thinking a staff room up here wouldn't be a bad idea. But we do, we do have one down here that doesn't get used. You know, we can have contractors, security, ramp agents. It doesn't, it doesn't get used. So I feel like... A staff room up here would be about equally as useless as any other. Uh, also, why is this one not getting built? Hello? Can we get a contractor over here to look at this? We seem to be missing a single piece of conveyor belts, and that is causing some problems. Oh, no, I hear it getting built. That's good. And there everything goes. Okay. So that's baggage heading out again. That should be every crisis averted. We shouldn't have anything weird going on planes. So now that that's done, what do I do? 
Because here's the thing, a lot of this game so far has been, you know, working out money-making schemes and optimizing little things, and I'm really enjoying it. Don't get me wrong, I have no complaints whatsoever. But I feel like we've definitely hit the point where it's like, yeah, you're going to be waiting around for a lot of money to then tear everything apart. But at the same time, we could be cheeky, right? We could. We, we could be a little bit cheeky with this. Because I have enough money to buy all of these tiles. And my goal is at some point to have all of these tiles. But what if I was to spend some money on this tile up here? In fact, arguably I wouldn't... Arguably, oh... Arguably I wouldn't have to. Now, I've just realized something. I've just realized something, and this... This could be cheeky. But... We have large aircraft stands, right? What if I put one here? And I put another one here. I could do a couple of large aircraft stands on this side of this weird section of terminal and then put a runway for it, you know, all the way up here, like across this way. Or I could be a little bit lazier because we wouldn't need to do that. And I could just do it like here, right? Or like here, right next to the other runway. That would be an option as well. And that would work. And then that would give us a bit more money, right? Because we'd be dealing with massive aircraft coming in. We'd be dealing with the services that those aircraft happen to want but we'd also have all of this space on the left side and the top middle to potentially one day in the near future build a huge new terminal and that's that's what i'm thinking we do i think we build a new terminal in the top middle space and we have a couple of large runways on this side a me couple of medium runways on this side we can let the small planes go in the medium runways. Medium planes on the medium runways. We have a bunch of stands and stuff. I, I, I think that would work. I don't know about you, but I, I think that would work. And I I want to try it. I do. I, this might, might not be an amazing idea, but I want to try it. So I'm gonna, right? We're gonna, we're gonna place that guy. We can do another one there. We can do another one there, and they happen to they happen to line up quite nicely, actually. So we could do. Oh man, we can do four of these. That's that's a lot. That's a lot of money. But I I think it's gonna be good. And then in terms of the runway, we just go for a large runway, and we kind of just stack it next to the other one. I know that's silly. I do, I do know that's quite silly, but I think it's a temporary thing. It's going to get us more money. And honestly, I just want to, I just want some large planes coming in, man. I really do. So we're doing it. We are, we're doing this ridiculous thing. Now, runway ramps are going to be plain and simple. We're just going to go for down the bottom and we're going to go for right up the top. This thing is huge. It takes up almost the entire map. Good Lord. Uh, that's fine. How wide does the taxiway have to be? So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we want to go seven by seven right there. And we basically want to go the entire way up to here. And that looks fine. Because here's what I can do at this point. I can go like this. I can do this. I can do this. And that gives us a taxiway that actually connects quite nicely to these stands and doesn't have the stands kind of, you know, pushing back straight onto the taxiway. So that's, that's okay, actually, having that distance. And I'm honestly curious to see how this little airport deals with this, right? That's, that's something else I'm curious about. So this will be a fun experiment at the very least. And I think, uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I don't, I don't have high hopes. I will say that. I don't, genuinely have any I don't have any hopes for this I think the airport's gonna fall apart but at the very least I can make sure to assign dedicated trucks uh, pushback trucks uh, stair things etc etc for this so it, it should be fine uh, and in terms of everything else I mean we'll delete this bathroom because it definitely needs to go 
We can delete everything in the bathroom because that definitely all needs to go. And then we do the same thing here. And actually, I almost wonder if we should delete all of the rooms along here. And I feel like we probably should. And then just completely restructure this whole thing. I feel like that's kind of going to be essential. Just completely restructuring the layout. Because we're going to have a lot of people. We're going to have a lot of people. I think we'll keep this bathroom though. That bathroom can stay, but everything else can go. Absolutely everything needs pulled out of there. So up to about there. We can keep that one shop, but definitely everything else. Well, there's definitely good news and bad news. The good news is that thus far, nothing bad has been loaded onto any of our planes. And the bad news is that this is taking forever to build. And I suspect it's going to be an absolute nightmare for the airport, but I'm so excited to see what happens. I, I, I can't, I can't lie. I, I, I can't. I'm just, I know this is going to be chaotic. I know it's going to be disastrous. I know putting these runways so close together is weird. And I know that's a particularly weird thing that I've done, but I just, I just want to see what happens. I really do. I, I just want to see what ends up happening here. I'm also realizing that we can have two stair trucks, I think, per uh, plane here. So that's going to be something we want. And I've also gone ahead and added an extra two of the self-boarding uh, gates rather than four on uh, the medium ones. It's going to be six on the large ones. And the little exit thing is kind of weird, but it does the job. And it gives us room for more benches and stuff like that as well. So it should work out. I was going to go with normal uh, boarding desks, but... Honestly, these actually let me better organize where people are going to go and where they're not going to go. So I figured the self-boarding desks were kind of the best bet. And I'm also slightly tempted to boot out all of the current contractors and see if we can get a contract for better ones. I've actually been looking a little bit because we get 140 from Brickley. And if we have a look at offered contracts, we could get 177 and they'd actually be cheaper. So you know what? I think let's do it. Let's dismiss all of them. Let's go to accepted contracts. Let's cancel this contract and go to you guys, get 177 and deploy all of them. Because that seems like a pretty good idea. That seems like a good way to run things. Although now I'm just going to have an absolute absolute bunch of uh, buses waiting to uh, do their thing because we are going to have some contractors that are still wanting to do some work right now they'll they'll have been queued up with a task or two so we might be waiting for a minute for uh these guys to get sorted but give it time and they'll they'll work it out i'm sure i'll tell you what's not going to work out this whole new thing my uh <laughs> my poor security is is gonna struggle also i don't know if i mentioned that i built a uh i built a, a, a staff room up here but yeah we have a staff room up here i think it's kind of nice looking yeah security is gonna be a nightmare check-in i think will be fine i mean yes it's very busy but the desks are almost never used self check-in is constantly used i i think we'll be fine also the amount of money that this place makes is ridiculous this place has done two million in revenue since we signed the contract. I don't know when we signed it. Oh, wait. It's day seven of year two. What is it now? Day one of year six. Oh, my God. These guys have been with us for a while. We should... Uh, I wonder if we should do more shops in this area. Also, this place has no one here anymore. Seriously. Can we... Let's, let's go for the... Let's go for the Italian place. Let's, let's go for the Italian one. That place is uh, still fine. That place is fine. That place is fine. You are not. Let's go for bottle. Seems like a good idea. And we'll go for... I don't know. Power, I guess. We'll go for a bit of a different store. A bit of a cheaper one that time around. and see how that goes for us. Hopefully good things happen. Oh no, I've just noticed something. These are international. These are not... Oh no, that means we need more things. That means we need more security. We need 
We need passport checkpoints, which we can get automated ones. So passengers traveling on international flights must pass through a passport checkpoint to have their passport screened and receive international clearance. Now, that's not the end of the world. I guess what we could arguably do now that's it's gonna be weird for this top one because I might have to get rid of that shop but I'm gonna use this lower stand right here as a test so if I go international zone and I say extend the international zone you know four units that way and I go passport checkpoint automated and I go and I do oh man I, I I'm one two three four five six right so we do that and then we have to extend the wall, you know, whatever. In theory, wait, these, oh, these have queues as well. Oh boy. No, oh, that's going to be a bit rough. I, I don't, I didn't, I didn't plan for this. It, it might, it might be shocking to you to realize that I didn't plan for this, but I didn't plan for this. So this, this is a bit of a pickle is what this is going to be but i think we'll manage as long as i don't have to do much else i don't think there is i mean look the smart thing to do would have been to just build this like a, a third weird terminal thing but look no one's watching this video for the smart thing to do in airport ceo let's be honest so we're fine everything's fine i am slightly annoyed that I can build a queue for these but that's probably fine I think at most what we'll do is just extend some queues something like this and I mean they're not necessarily going to be long enough for massive international flights but they'll be enough for now and that's that's fine I don't I realize that is completely unnecessary as well like that or sorry not unnecessary that is completely the wrong way to do this what would have actually happened here is this should be its own terminal and this should be uh essentially set up in such a way wait does that mean that people arriving oh i hope that people arriving don't have to go through customs a passenger can't pass customs make sure a customs booth is accessible through walls and now you say customs now we have passport checkpoints. I don't I don't know that there's anything beyond that. I'm not 100% sure, but I want to say that there's nothing beyond the passport checkpoints. Although what I might want to do is just remove that so that passenger can at least get out of there and then I can go ahead and do this and this and that should now be an international zone. So if that works, I, I I don't know. I I don't I don't know about this. I I don't know that this is a good idea. The other issue that we're having is that all of my baggage stands are actually full. So I reluctantly have to do a thing here, which is I have to extend baggage handling, and I'm not looking forward to, uh, to doing this, but I kind of don't have a choice. So we're gonna what is this? This is a 11 by 7 space let's do an 11 by 7 space down here and let's go ahead and get rid of some walls because we're basically going to do the same thing in fact we don't have to do the same thing we could have this be oh I actually I have a bit of an idea uh let's do this and let's do this just remove those sections of wall and then I can go ahead and bring some little bits of uh, of road in here so just up to like there should be fine and then for baggage itself it's going to be as simple as where's the thing where's that's what i'm looking for uh this thing just goes here i guess yeah sort of in the middle of the space that's fine uh so we'll set that as a secure zone we'll set all of it as a uh, secure zone and then if i just go and grab the baggage bay it can go right about there that's roughly the same spot as the other one and in terms of the roads it's just going to be as simple as bringing the roads down into the building so we go here 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 and here 
and that will hopefully be okay. I don't, I don't know if it's going to work out too well for us, but we'll see. And then everything else is just going to be a case of, I guess, just splitting the baggage off in other directions. So, let's see. Where does it go? So that's up to the thing. So the one on the right is going to departures. So what we want to do is we want to go here. We want escalator down. And then we're going to want escalator going up on uh, this side. So it would go right about there. So that'll be fine. That's going to be arrivals and departures. And how is that going to work? I guess we do a tilt tray over here, right? So we want rid of you. We want to bring this down. We want to bring it over this way down and connect it like... Oh boy, that's that's not quite right. Uh, connect it something like this. So that'll be... Wait. No, that's not right at all. Actually, I did it to the, the wrong side there. Uh, so this just comes straight down and up like that. So a tilt tray there. Everything will go where it needs to go. And then for arrivals, it's actually just... As easy as that. Although, the question does become, do I need to build another, I guess, baggage claim space? Because if I do, I'm not looking forward to doing that. I'm really, really not looking forward to having to do that. And wouldn't you know, it turns out I'm completely right. We need to build another, another baggage claim thing, which is a little bit annoying. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm a little bit... A little bit annoyed, but that's that's fine. Uh, cannot be opened without connection to an aircraft stand and a check-in desk or baggage claim. Okay. So why are you having problems? Not connected. What are you not connected to? Oh, I know what you're not connected to. It's because that's gone. Now that's that's also sent a lot of baggage in the wrong direction there, but that's probably okay. Uh, just give me a simple little tilt tray here. And that should solve all of our problems. And then what we can do, I guess, is reconnect you to the new baggage bay. I'm not 100% sure about this, but I think it's going to have to be the way we do it. And then you are connected to that one. You are connected to that one. Where are you connected to? You're connected over there. Okay. What if we reconnect you... So instead of going over that way, you're going to go to the new baggage thing, and so are you. So we have basically two self-check-in and two desks for the international flight. That should let me turn this on, which it absolutely does. This guy, I'm not going to switch on yet because I need to get another uh, baggage belt. So I think the way to do that, honestly, just tear out these chairs, tear out these guys, and... We're, I mean, ugh, look, this is, this is gonna, this is gonna get rid of my beautiful looking baggage claim area and stop it from being quite as neatly organized as it is, but I think we're just gonna have to accept the fact that it's, you know, th th this is what we have to do, right? This is, this is just how it is. This is just how it's gonna work. So let's figure this out. Let's, let's see what we can do here. I think easiest thing to, uh, to do would be to mirror this, I guess. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, so there. But then mirroring, it's not really gonna work, is it? Uh, okay. Okay, what about, what about, what about, what about, hmm. I mean, we could just do the same sort of U-shape thing, just sort of sideways. That would be an option. Or, I mean, we could do, we could do this. We can bring it sort of out. We can kind of go, oh, I'm going to make something weird here. I, I'm, I'm being cautious about what I'm, what I'm building. Cause if you, if, if you've ever seen me play city skylines, you'll be aware that sometimes some certain shapes can just appear. And I, I'm trying to avoid that. So we'll do this. And then that's what four. So, one, two, three, four, across and down. And I guess that's, that's, that's a thing. That is, um, <laughs> that would be hell. That would be hell. Like, 
uh, just people be like bunched up in here, but it would technically work. So I think that's probably fine. Uh, and then we just need like tilt trays and I need the tilt trays to be, uh, I think they'll work. I think they'll work regardless. This is ridiculous, but it's, it's what we're doing. It's, it's what we have to do. It's the only way I'm going to be able to get this international thing going. And I wasn't even planning on doing this today. I was going to make this a really, really short episode. I was genuinely going to be like, okay, baggage is fixed. Now we're going to, you know, for you, it's going to be like a day or two until the next episode. For me, I'm going to sit here for the next 20 hours and let the game just total up money. But no, I decided that this is what I was going to do with my day, which honestly, no regrets. So let's just do this as as a baggage area let's connect you to the new uh baggage bay and that is a thing that now exists as ridiculous as it may be and oh boy it is ridiculous but it uh technically works i guess and i i guess a, a technical victory in this case is still a victory Although I do want to say that these areas in the middle are 100% staff zones because I really don't like it when uh, when people just like run around inside of the uh, the conveyor belts. It really does annoy me. So we'll do that sort of thing. And I mean, we still have seating, so that's fine. It looks dumb, but it it does the job. And technically, it actually means I think I can I think I can open this now. Yeah, everything's connected. The, oh, wait, no, we can't open it yet. We need vehicles. So, um, vehicles wise. Now, hold on a minute. Can I rename you? Yes, I can. So vehicle depot eight and nine. Um, I guess a large stand vehicle depot one is what we'll go for there. And two on that one. And the reason I'm doing that is because when I buy these vehicles, if we go to purchase and I set it to turn all of them off, what I want to do is I want to get two of these guys. And I want to make sure, well, actually, I only need one of these right now. So we'll get one. And it's, well, actually, it's not really going to be assigned anywhere, but that's okay. Uh, so we'll get one of those. We'll order another few of you guys as well. It's not made the requirements for per- Oh, we don't have de-icing right now. That's fine. Then what else have we got? We're going to need these. I'm going to get two of them. We're probably going to want another couple of these guys as well. And then in terms of fuel, I mean, I think one of these kind of dedicated would be an idea. In terms of transit, I think another- two stair trucks would be an idea and then i don't think we need much else so that's fine we'll get those on the way but i've also just realized that we don't have a hangar right now so let me get one of those because we're absolutely going to need it and it also needs a connection to roads so we can actually just put it right about there and that'll be perfect and then in terms of the taxiway just plain and simple we want it to go like this with three on that side, three on that side, and then just run the taxiway straight down the middle. And that should be fine, I think. I wanna say that'll be fine. Should be fine, shouldn't be a problem. And now that all the products are arriving, we can go ahead and start assigning things as well. So, let's look at transit. We don't need dedicated buses. We don't need dedicated service cars. We need the stair trucks. And they... Some of them are assigned, some of them are not. So you are going to be assigned here, and you are going to be assigned here. So that's two of them assigned to that large stand, and that's okay. In terms of all of these guys, I don't think many of these actually do get assigned. Uh, this large one definitely does, and that's okay. In terms of baggage... I feel, I, I don't know if I can assign two uh, large belt loaders to the single stand. It looks like I absolutely can, which is lovely. And then in terms of fuel, we should have, I mean, we don't, I guess we don't have the large truck right now. Not 100% sure why we don't have that. I don't know if I can actually assign the, is it on the way? Oh, it'll be here in a minute. Okay, that's fine. I don't know if I can actually assign these the same way either, but I guess we'll see. No, but I can assign it here. 
which is probably for the best. And then we also have refueling up uh, this way as well, so that's that's all right. And that's also connected as well. Okay, so that now should be everything. Although I probably also want to get some dedicated uh, baggage handling stuff too. So let's see what we have. We have, well, a lot of baggage trucks not assigned to anything right now. That's fine. I guess we grab you and assign you here. And I guess we grab you and assign you as well. And that should be two of them. And that'll hopefully work out. So now this thing is probably good to open. Which means, and oh boy, this could be interesting. Uh, we should end up seeing some large flights coming in. So that's the large stand right there. We should start, we should start seeing some. Also, can I, so they're always international, that's fine. Okay. I, I'm nervous about this, but I'm also quite excited about this. I don't remember the last time I had like a, an actual large flight due to come in. Is that a large flight? That is a large flight, it's international. Ooh. Can I manually assign this one? Oh, it's man managed by the auto planner. Okay. Well, that's fine. I'm sure the auto planner will throw something in there in just a second. Hopefully. Okay, the auto planner didn't do it. I did. But we have three large flights due to come in very, very soon. Which means we should see an absolute boatload or plane load of people showing up to the airport in no time at all because it's three hours until that flight is due to land all of those people are going to need to go through security oh boy oh boy <laughs> what have i done this this is either going to go amazingly or terribly and i genuinely don't know which uh also we're kind of short on janitors right now so let's hire a few more of those because we definitely need them. So one, two, three, four, five. That'll hopefully help us out a little bit. In terms of people, I mean, the airport seems to be doing okay. It certainly seems like it's fine. We are two hours out from uh, Nordic flight. What is it? 106 landing. It'll be our... F oh, I'm actually excited. It's our first... It is the first large flight that we have going through the airport. And everyone has to go underground, through the ridiculous tunnel, underneath the runways, up into this ridiculous space. They have to get their passports checked, then go through the check-in thing. I... I'm also wondering, actually... Going through passport check... Uh... I, I wonder if that is... Hmm... I wonder if the way the game wants you to do that is that they go through passport check into like an international departures area rather than straight to the gate. Because I might have made a terrible mistake there. But, oh, look at that. Look at that. Not bad. Not bad at all. That's, that's really cool, man. That is really cool. Oh, no. Oh, that's exactly what they expect you to do. Oh, no. Oh, God, what have I done? Wait, what do you guys need to do? Oh, no. Uh. Uh. <laughs> uh, do you need to get your... Th oh, no. Well, I have a... Ho hold on a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Passengers traveling on international flights must pass through a checkpoint to have their passport screened and receive international clearance. So... So, must cross international zone. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. I think I know what I must... I think I know what I need to do here. Um, okay. I don't know if this... I, th I think this is what I need to do. Oh, boy. Okay, let's do that real quick. And let me see if my theory was... Oh, I've just completed something okay i think i've just finished the tutorial is my theory right i mean so this is a problem right this is problem number one this is why we're we're only doing one stand right now um that's that's fine i need to know i i think these guys have to pass through so they have to get their passports checked when they when they land i think that's what's going on that's okay that's that's fine 
these are these are being built in theory yeah oh no oh boy okay well at least these guys are able to they, they can do what they need to do right now um we're gonna need to cancel all the other flights so let's do that real quick because that's gonna be a problem that's 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 part of the experience though that's that's we're just we're, we're learning is what we're doing we're gonna cancel the flights every other day as well uh we're gonna cancel it there we're gonna cancel you because we really don't want to be dealing with that and we're gonna have to oh no the auto oh no auto planner why oh god right i need i need the plane the plane's gone okay so once the once the plane's not being pushed back anymore which it isn't we can close this that's that's fine that's okay that's that's a learning experience that's all that is that is just a learning experience we have discovered that uh yeah they they need a dedicated international departures space essentially so this this entire construction has either been for nothing or i'm gonna have to miraculously create a full international departures space and i have no idea how i'm gonna do that but i think it's probably going to involve deleting this room and uh well frankly deleting just everything in 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 this whole space as well um a little disappointing that i that i have to do this uh but definitely definitely necessary also uh we probably don't want to demolish these right now because i'm pretty sure these guys are still yeah they're still very much stuck in there so that's fine i i, I actually kind of have an idea anyway right i think what we'll have to do is make it so that international passengers basically there's gonna be a big wall right here and international passengers coming in are gonna have to go all the way up through passport checkup here then walk the entire way back down so basically we're just gonna lengthen the walk that they already have to do and then arrivals come down to the bottom and they'll be fine so basically arrivals are gonna be coming down to here going to about there and what we can do is go to desks or go to security I'm not going to do this one. We're going to do the automated one. And essentially, it'll be something like uh, like this. So one, two, three, four. And uh, then there'll be like four up at the top end as well. And I, I think that's about the only way I can do it with this weird setup that we have. And I know it's weird. I know it doesn't make a lot of sense. I know it's a little bit overly complicated and silly and dumb. And I know I could make this so much more efficient. But honestly, this is just fun. It, it really is. I know it seems ridiculous, and that's because it is. That, that is that is because it is ridiculous. But it is kind of fun. I'm not gonna lie. It's I'm I'm I am having a little bit of fun making this absolute chaos of uh, of an airport. So that's that's fine. Having it be chaotic right now, I am actually not too worried about it. So I think what we'll do is extend this entire thing which must be placed in a secure zone oh i missed a part okay so right there we extend this the whole way down and it goes to the very bottom which is apparently going to be there oh okay well i mean that's that's fair enough i guess we could extend it one further out but we'll not so that whole space is going to be international and then we have the the passport checks up at this end so they go one two three four the queues kind of wrap around a little bit and that's okay and i i i guess that's what we're doing i guess that's how this is going to work i'm not i'm not a hundred percent convinced by this <laughs> i don't know if that's obvious uh it should be definitely should be but I mean, it'll it'll work, I guess. I guess technically this will work. So you go into the international zone at the top, you leave at the bottom, and that's that's the way of it, I guess. Seems dumb, but uh, sure. Okay, I've got to be completely honest. I was gonna wrap this video 
up a little while ago. This was not going to be a long video at all, but I got a little carried away doing some building on the international thing. And I'm kind of happy with how it's turned out, given that it was just this weird little space over here. And this is basically what it is now. Now, admittedly, there's only three boarding desks per stand, but that is okay, I think. And the way I've done the whole passport thing is basically they will have to go the entire way to the top here, but then they have four queues that kind of wrap around, go in here, they go down to wherever they need to go. We can put some bathrooms in here, maybe some shops in there. They can sit, they can board. Anyone coming out can go to one of four queues to leave the zone. It it works. So I'm, I'm going to turn the stand back on and we're going to see if it works a little better this time. And I think the better way to uh, do this is just going to be... Wait, where's the stand? There it is. Uh, I'm going to turn off auto planner and I'm basically just going to find myself a nice large flight. And we're going to see if we can uh, get this to work out. I'm sure there's a large flight somewhere that wants to land, right? Yeah, right here, Maple. So we'll go ahead and queue up a Maple flight. It's going to be coming in at 9. We can queue up, I'm sure, another Maple flight to uh, come in a little bit later on after that one at about 3. And we'll let the auto planner kind of do the rest. But I'm thinking that if this works the way I hope it does, we should see all of the international passengers heading up this way, going through passport check, coming all the way back down and just sort of doing their thing. There is a bathroom down here so they can use that before they go anywhere. There's no vending machines. There's no, no there's nothing really nice about all of this space right here. But at the very least, this uh, well, actually, if I'm if I'm completely honest, if we get the extra vehicles that we need for each of these stands, Technically, all of them can be opened pretty quickly. I'm not going to do that right now, though. That is going to be a, a next episode kind of deal. Because I just want to see how the one stand sort of copes with everything. And I want to see how the airport actually copes with the, what should be a fully functional international stand. Again, should be is kind of the key word there, but... We'll see what happens. Either way, it's less than two hours until that flight is due to land. We should have all of the people coming in for it. Security looking nice and busy, which is exactly what we want it to be. Uh, baggage handling over here. A lot of bags coming in. That's okay. We should be able to deal with that. And we should have the flight coming in very, very soon. Do we have anyone in this area right now? Doesn't look like it. Okay, that's a little bit of a worry, but that's okay. That's to be expected, I guess. I mean, these checkpoints are up and running, so... I don't know. I guess uh, the flight's about to land, though. There it is. Oh my god, that thing's huge. Okay, well, that's fine. Uh, that's... that's... Wait, what is that? Oh, it's being blocked by an animal. That's fine. What, uh, what plane is this? Can we, can we see what it is? It's an A380. Oh my God. Wait, we have, we have 349 people due to get on that plane. Oh God. Uh, boarding, sh we, we definitely should have people up here by now. Although it does look like there's a lot of people in this area now. So I feel like a lot of those, yeah, there we go. So this should work out, right? I mean, yes, it's a lot of people, but... Oh, what are you all doing? Why are you all just bunching up right there? Oh, now they're moving. Okay, so now they all kind of come down towards their gate. We have passengers all deboarding, which is fine. They're all kind of heading to where they need to go to. We've got refueling being done. I think, yeah, we do. We've got, what is that, cabin cleaning going on? Okay. I mean, that's... That's good. That's actually worked out. I mean, there's not enough seats for everybody. Wait, what? Uh-oh. An equipment failure. It's not the, It's not this flight, at least. Okay, so there wasn't enough seats for everybody, but they are, at the very least, able to board, even though it looks like some of them might be avoiding the, uh, the, the boarding gate thing there. That's a bit of a worry as well. But for the most part, this is fine. This is, this is good. This actually worked, aside from the need for more boarding uh, capacity there but uh this this is good that looks like all of our baggage coming in i would imagine yeah so that's all getting loaded onto the flight as well 
Okay, so... I think we've just successfully handled our first... I mean, yeah, we had we had a large flight before, but it was a bit of a nightmare because the area wasn't set up properly. I think we've now actually successfully handled our first large flight. That's kind of cool. I gotta be honest, that's, that's kind of cool. So now we just need the vehicles for the other ones and a few more chairs, and we're pretty much good to go. So let's get the seating, right? Let's let's get that dealt with. I'm not really sure that we're going to be able to do too much with uh, bathrooms and all that in all of this space, because uh, looking at it, I mean, we definitely need a lot of seating for this whole area. But, I mean, we have a little bit of free space just here. So that's not too bad. Although this area up here is definitely not going to have much free space, because, uh, you know, we kind of need the extra seats all around. But that, I'm sure, will be fine. That's... I'm actually quite happy about that. I've got to be honest, I'm actually really, really pleased that it, it worked kind of as smoothly as, as it did. Everyone's just able to get through and do what they need to do, and the airport actually seemed to hold up pretty well. We have another one coming in, which is slightly terrible. There's 534 people getting off that plane. There's 430 due to board. Oh my god. I mean, I know the A380 is a huge plane, but good lord. My my poor little airport. We, we really need to upgrade this thing. We are not... There's no way this airport's able to realistically handle all of that. Oh man. That's kind of nuts. They're still they're still deboarding. They're still going. They are still going. And still going. Still still a few to go. Still a good few to go. Wow. That is That's nuts. That is that is that is just nuts. That's so many people. And there's still so many to come down here as well. Good lord. Okay. So, I feel like getting... Wait. Oh, those are, those are contractors. That's okay. I feel like... I mean, one, we need even more seats. But two, if I have four of the... If I have four A380s land at any one time, this little passport check thing is never going to work. That's going to be a disaster. And honestly, I'm kind of here for it. I kind of want to see that disaster happen because I think it's going to be hilarious. I also imagine up here, yeah, quite busy, quite busy indeed. And then poor little baggage handling over here is probably having a nightmare because I realize we only have two ramp agents per side there, so definitely going to want more of those just to keep this thing running nicely. But this makes me happy. This is good. Yes, it's... What is going on? Why? Why have we not... Okay, so boarding has started now. I, I thought the plane was about to get pushed back right there. I, I honestly thought we were about to see pushback start without boarding, and I was going to cry. Okay. So we're dealing with this. This is good. How's the economy looking? Let me have a quick look. So daily, we made 338,000 the day before today, yesterday. 131 today, so we're still making money. We're still doing okay. Now we just open the rest of these. And now we actually end the video, which has gone on for way too long. <laughs>